everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Fract OSC. I want to say a couple of things before we get started here. If you have a propensity for motion sickness, this might be a video where maybe you want to watch a little bit of it and then decide if you want to watch more of it on a scale from about 1 to 10. I am maybe a 6 or a 7 when it comes to that propensity for motion sickness, and Fract is a game that has occasionally made me a little bit queasy. That being said, if you are not that kind of person, I would definitely advise you to tune in because this is a very interesting game which just came out on Steam this Tuesday. It is probably Wednesday at the time this video is going up, so it came out yesterday. And it's a first-person puzzler, but unlike a, a lot of first-person puzzlers that have come out in, uh, I don't want to spoil that puzzle just yet, as I'm still doing the preamble here, unlike a lot of first-person puzzlers that have come out since, you know, 2008 or so, this is not just, hey, we remade Portal, but with magnets, or hey, we remade Portal, but this time you have, like, a gun that shoots jump pads with different gravities and stuff like that. Nothing against those games, and not to slight them, but this is much more abstract, it reminds me of, a. Uh, you know, the kinds of games, and I don't mean this derisively to Nick either, the kinds of games that Nick Rockley Smile plays all the time, these atmospheric indie puzzlers, platformers, where you kind of walk around and solve environmental uh, atmospheric puzzles. It's a little bit like that. We're going to get started here very, very simply um, with Fract, which, by the way, is available for $13.49 for its opening week sale, or $15 uh, after that. Uh, and I'll explain what's going on here. So occasionally, it's not like you'll be walking through an environment and then, like, you don't even realize you're in a puzzle right now. That has not happened to me so far in my hour or so of play. Uh, more, it's like you come to these puzzle chambers. In a weird, it's it's a weird situation because it kind of reminds me the most or is reminiscent the most of uh, Jonathan Blow's upcoming game, The Witness, at least from what we've seen in, like, marketing materials and promo stuff for that. Uh, by the way, by completing that, we have lit up one-third of this kind of triumvirate here, but that will eventually lead to an elevator, which will lead to the real puzzles in the game. This is kind of the tutorial section. I'm using keyboard and mouse, but as you can see, the 360 controller works totally fine as well. Um, yeah, because they, it, again, the reason it's most similar to The Witness is that it feels like it's kind of very much about creating this atmosphere and then uh, sending the player on that atmosphere, within that atmosphere, to solve puzzles that weirdly are not kind of like necessarily embedded into it or not like seamlessly embedded into the environment. Rather, they are their own standalone thing, which to be honest with you, I prefer because I'm not constantly on guard wondering if I'm in the middle of a puzzle right now. The puzzles start out very, very simplistically uh, as we are in the tutorial here, but I wanted to make sure that I was doing puzzles that I already knew. So basically, we have to power up all three of these pillars here, and by powering these three pillars up, uh, this will allow me... We need to turn this dial here to get all the way. This is one kind of sore spot with the game. I feel the mouse controls on these radial dials are not perfect. But it's workable, and it did work totally fine there. Um, yeah, and by uh, by getting all the three pillars going here, we can actually get to the main part of the game. I will also say you might not be hearing any music or sound effects right now, or at least very minimalistic ones. It is a minimalistic game, but it is also very musically uh, heavy, if that's a good way to put it. Or musically, I don't want to say it's necessarily musically... Uh, it's, it's not a musical puzzler, except in some ways it is, but the music plays a big role in setting the stage for the game, and you'll hear that, uh, I hope so, at least as we get a little bit further along. So here, all we have to do is slide that dial all the way up to the top, and you might be saying, these look like the easiest puzzles of all time. Those three puzzles are very much tutorial puzzles, basically to not just teach you the controls, because you could probably, you know, figure out for yourself how the keyboard and mouse work, uh, in, especially within the context of a game like this, uh, but more to teach you about the kinds of, like, interfaces and, and modules that you'll be dealing with as you play a little bit more Frax. So the game is divided in almost like an old school puzzle kind of way where there is like one central hub world and it's non-linear, you can choose which way to go uh, in the order that, you know, you so choose. Just letting the music get a little bit more sinister here as it goes on. It's actually getting a little bit loud and I don't want to turn it off just, or turn it down too much just yet, but I will adjust that if necessary as we get a little bit higher up here. Maybe I won't have to, we'll see. So, uh, that will illuminate the staircase, and we can then go and uh, start uh, actually solving some of the puzzles in this game. And I'm going to play a, a pretty good deal of Fract. Uh, it is not a short game, at least from uh, what I have played so far. Actually, I shouldn't say that with any kind of authority, but from what I've played so far, it isn't, it isn't a short game. And I've watched Mathis, or uh, talked to Mathis as he played a bunch of it as well. And he was in the same boat, basically, where, um, you know, we all beat, or we beat, like, all three of these opening puzzles that we have to encounter here. And uh, the game didn't just end after that, which is roughly an hour of play, which is what, you know, we were a little, not necessarily concerned about, but a little curious about, because a lot of these uh, first-person puzzlers, you play them, and then you're like, oh, this is pretty good, I just got the gimmick, and it's over. Which is fine, for the most part, but uh, this does seem a little bit more fully featured, although, as always, I would encourage you to check out more uh, comprehensive reviewers to determine... Uh, how long the game actually is and do your due diligence there like I'm doing my due diligence here with respect to the kinds of content I normally produce 
So, the atmosphere, in fact, is really cool. It's got kind of this neon-like, almost like, uh, you know, Dark Souls 2 meets Tron style aesthetic. Like, doesn't this look a little bit like Brightstone Cove Sildora here from Dark Souls 2? I apologize if you are mad that I just named a relatively early game area in that game. Trust me, you'll see it pretty soon, especially considering it comes out in, like, two days. Uh, and... It's big on this like kind of technological side of things. Everything looks futuristic, but also very minimalistic, minimalistic and simplistic. Uh, but you also don't necessarily know what everything is. So the first time you look at this chamber, you're just like, oh, what is it? But if you right click, that basically enters puzzle solving mode. It also puts this really cool kind of like video VCR bend effect on things, which I think looks really cool. And you look at this and you're like, what is this? Is this like from... Um Cosmo Canyon in Final Fantasy 7 where you go up in the planetarium and you can look at all this stuff Well in a weird way yes if I just click on one of these buttons here like this one for example You'll find that this is actually uh, an elevator so this will actually take us back to this central elevator So that's what that white thing uh, that white glowing light represented there I apologize I'm taking things really slowly right now but this is because I, I want to if possible engender some of the mystery and uh, you know Ambiguity of what makes Fract interesting to play through firsthand in a secondhand video, which is a difficult thing to do. Uh, but, you know, I'm assuming that many of you watching this will end up playing it for yourself. And it is one of those games we're experiencing for yourself and solving the puzzles for yourself. Having those eureka moments for yourself is important. So, uh, basically, to kind of spoil it after I just said that it's important to do that, um, there's three different lights that we need to illuminate here as well the green one, the pink one, and the teal one. And these all represent kind of like multi-stage puzzles uh, that we'll find as we move a little bit further throughout the game. I think the game looks good. I think it sounds fantastic. And uh, in particular, the, the sense of movement feels really good too. Like, I apologize if this is making you a little bit dizzy. But the reticle almost has like a, like a battlefield or a Call of Duty thing going on. And I'm not saying that to be insulting. It actually, unlike most... Uh, you know, first-person games where, you know, if I move, uh, well, that's a bad example. If I move, like, my mouse 35 degrees here, then my head turns 35 degrees instantly. There's a little bit of, like, a lag time, and you can see that based on how the reticle moves around here. Uh, and I think it makes it a little bit more realistic. You feel like your, your view is heavy, like it's weighty. And it, I think it's a positive uh, thing for the game. And maybe that's why, compared to games like Portal, uh, I haven't necessarily gotten 100% as nauseous. Same with Quantum Conundrum. I think those games are just, like, the fidelity is just too good. Whereas in this, um, it, it's a little weighty, a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of a latency between when you choose to do something and when it actually happens, uh, at least from your viewpoint standpoint. But it's not a bad thing, it's actually a, a very, very good thing, I think. And again, we'll get a nice view as we take this elevator to the puzzle area, uh, over what's a very cool kind of area over here. And you can see all those elevators. Good lord, I wonder what those lead to. For now, though, we're gonna go inside of our green puzzle room, and we'll definitely solve this puzzle and maybe solve one more puzzle before the end of this video. So, uh, this is a self-contained kind of puzzle unit where we will be able to uh, make some good stuff happen. This door is going to open for us, and our goal is going to be to get over there and have that door open for us. But, there's two stages to this puzzle. One of them is probably pretty obvious. We are on this platform. If I right-click, I get a radial dial that just kind of pops up in my HUD, and I can rotate this as such and you can probably tell me what I want to do there then I can use these platforms to essentially walk on and I can probably uh, maybe I can't I thought I could rotate that one over here to meet me but yeah we want to rotate our platforms in such a way that we can walk over there so we're gonna go like this one which we're already at this one then there's one kind of obscured by this pillar in the middle here and then that one over there and that's how we're gonna get to the door that's stage one of the puzzle so why don't we rotate our um, our platform around to do that and again none of it is really explicitly stated in spite of that line that was on the screen there you have to figure it out for yourself but the other thing that's at work here is um, this laser so you have to get this laser to send the uh, beam or sorry you have to like rotate these components pipes I guess if you will to send the beam uh, across to actually activate this door because this door is only powered up right now because the laser is actually touching it So I think what we actually want to do is rotate this one all the way around to the back and in doing so that should cause the laser to actually fire the other way mm, You know what I've got this backwards actually we were totally in the right before Let's look back up and we're gonna rotate that around like so and we'll just walk over here when we get the chance You can fall down, but you can also just teleport back up if you do uh, It's not really a game where you know dying or avoiding dying is really that big of a deal what we have to do now is set up this, uh, so that not only does this platform reach, which it already does, uh, but we can also, like, accept the laser from the, uh, from the other side. So we want to rotate, uh, that's rotating the other one. My mistake. Come back. As you walk on the Megas, they activate for the first time. 
Um, why can't I rotate this one right now? That seems weird to me. Maybe this one does not rotate. That seems unusual. I thought for sure I rotated that one before. So we want to rotate this one to put it in such a way that the um, tiles are lining up. That would allow us to walk on it. But we don't have any laser beam acceptance coming in yet. So we're going to rotate this one very quickly one more time. Uh, like, oh, I fell down to the bottom. Uh, we can just walk back up to the surface here. That's my bad. I, this puzzle actually, I, I'll be honest with you, I sort of solved it by accident the first time I was playing. I, um, well, you get a chance to look at the other cool stuff going on in the environment here. Uh, yeah, I, I was like, I, I, mean, I set the platforms up and I was like, what do I do? I don't get it. And then like a beam of light from heaven, I rotated one and a laser beam shot out and I was like, thank God I finally got it. So... Uh, I wouldn't necessarily describe the puzzles in the game as overly difficult so far, but they are very abstract. And uh, that's when Mathis and I got on a call with one another. That's basically what we were talking about. Is like, hey, uh, oh, that might actually send the laser. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Um, when we were uh, talking to each other, it's like, hey, I sort of get how to do this puzzle, but I don't necessarily understand why right now. Uh, and it was it was very helpful to have another person around to uh to go through that so this is not the way we want to do this we want to rotate this slightly less so probably to that 12 o'clock position and that should send the laser all the way down to the end and we have uh set up a platform for us to be able to walk to the end and i think we have to rotate this one more 90 degrees like this way and that should open the door there we go and uh Nice little sense of, like, reward when you actually finish it, and a nice sense of, kind of, mysticism as well when you finish it. Even though that's a pretty simplistic, like, you know, connect the dots type puzzle. Uh, figuring it out and watching the, the level kind of grow around you and, and light up around you as you do it really gets that uh, serotonin pumping, to be honest with you. Now, these are the showpiece puzzles, at least from what I've seen in Fract so far. They are what I will describe as essentially line puzzles. And I'm going to shut up for a second because there is some audio here. Once I click on these. Alright, so hopefully you can hear that uh, well enough. And this is what I mean when I say that it's musically heavy in like a Close Encounters of the Third Kind kind of way. Uh, but it isn't really musically based, at least from what I've played so far. That might be subject to change in future hours. So what we have to do for this uh, puzzle is actually, and this is totally spoiling it, uh, but as you can see, you know, every basically bar or measure that gets counted, one of these gets hit and it lights up. And this is basically the cue to transmit power, which is represented by these green bars, which we can click and place. Um, it'll transmit power to those two modules that you can see up there. And you can see, like, the uh, power in them kind of grow radially uh, as we place more and more, uh, more and more bars down. But we only have a limited number of power, as you can see by our one side of the screen here. Now the game suggests putting uh, bars here. I think that's what it means anyway by the um, by the like kind of lighted up areas that it puts down. But that's not actually how I solve the puzzle. So what we have to do here, I mean, you, I'll just show you the easiest way to demonstrate w like why you would do the puzzle this way, if that makes sense. We've lighted up like almost the entire bottom line. That is going to cause a laser to shoot out of this distant nodule into this one. But this one's not powered up, so it can't receive it. So what we have to do is see how many it takes for this thing to get powered up. So it's going to depower in a second. There we go. Takes one, two, three, and then on like the fourth one, by the fourth one, it has actually shot its laser. So let's make sure that that only has four active at any given time. And then I think what we can do is actually just cause this to start powering up, the other one to start powering up like here. And we want it to be ready by like there. Will this actually work? Let's see if this works out. I still have more power, so I think the answer to that question is probably no. The top one actually takes a lot longer to actually get powered up. Or the, the closer one takes a lot longer to get powered up. So, meh, I don't think this is going to work. But what if we try putting one bar of power here and one bar of power here? I almost feel like I'm playing FTL again. So we'll wait for this cycle to be complete. I think at the 8th measure, it may actually, after the 8th measure, it may actually just reset automatically. Let's see. It does. Okay, so this is not the way to solve the puzzle. I think. You can't just stack up the power in both of them at the same time. But maybe what you could do is put this line here, and then when it goes through like this section, once the power is already used up, we can try to keep the power on in other sections. And there we go. Okay, so there was a little bit of a quick timey event type thing there. 
Now, for doing that, we unlocked what is called the Pad Step Sequencer and Pad Modulation 1. I'm gonna be honest with you, I have borderline no idea that what these actually do, I've just been solving the puzzles, but I believe these correlate to some lock screens in the hub world, and again, it's musically focused. Uh, I think that's um, kind of what they're getting at there, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Maybe you unlock more musical instruments as time goes on or something like that, and that allows you to make custom tracks. I don't know. All I know is, well, you know, as Paul Simon said, I know what I know. And what I know is first-person puzzle platformer. And not in, like, oh, that was stupid of me. Not in, like, a life goes on sense. Uh, not only was that stupid of me, it was actually a little bit genius of me as well. I've never actually, I thought I saw some lights over here, but no. Um, it was genius of me as well, because I can just walk back this way, and that's way more effective. And if I want to, I can actually take the elevator all the way back to our very first area, and we'll see what the fastest route to accomplish this is. So this is basically like a fast travel system. I don't know if eventually that little uh, cluster there opens up and we can do something inside of it, but as is, it's very intriguing from an architectural standpoint for sure. This will take us back to the central hub world and we'll probably go and solve uh, one more puzzle or one more puzzle room in Fract before we continue. And if I'm accidentally showing off like 80% of the game, I apologize, but I don't think that I am. Uh, this is probably a prudent time now that I've kind of shown what goes on in Fract. Talk about my impressions of it so far. I I like it, and I'll explain why I sound kind of muted in my my praise for it. Generally speaking, I'm not a uh, an arty game guy. I'm not. I mean, I did name Gone Home my favorite game of last year, and I hesitate to even mention that because it always drums up all sorts of controversy in the comments. But that genuinely was the most affecting and my favorite game from last year. Uh, but for the most part, whenever I play really abstract, artistic games, uh, I find myself feeling a little bit alienated. Not to say that they're bad, just that they are not for me. This is obviously, as you can see, another elevator. Or another, well, teleporter, basically. Um, they're not really for me. So if I was like a Crusader Kings 2 character, I would almost say that, you know, uh, an abstract game automatically gets like a little bit of a, uh, opinion minus for me. And that is definitely still at work here in, um... In fact, I do find myself sometimes kind of feeling like a grumpy old man, and this is all personal preference, so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, but I'm like, why couldn't they just make this not a first-person puzzler? Well, it would lose a lot of the atmosphere, Grandpa, and it wouldn't be as quite as, you know, intriguing of a Yeah, but it's just, a, I want the puzzles in front of me on a piece of paper. That's me. Again, your mileage may vary uh, with respect to that. Additionally, for all of the pomp and circumstance of the environment, of the fact that it's abstract and, and minimalistic and crazy and oh god, what kind of alien world are we in? The puzzles so far have boiled down to kind of like suss out where to place the lines and where to, you know, move the blocks to. And once you do it, then it's done. And I'm not sure if that's necessarily an, an objective negative, if there even is such a thing as like objective games criticism. But I, I almost feel like the puzzles are a little bit ordinary, if that makes sense which contrasts a little bit with the atmosphere of the game. That being said, I do like the time I've spent in Fract so far, and if you compare Fract uh, with its kind of ordinary puzzles to Portal, Quantum Conundrum, uh, and I'm not saying this is better than Portal, just to nip that in the bud, if you pair this to Quantum Conundrum or, you know, Mag Runner or something like that, uh, I much prefer this kind of puzzle solving, even in a first person setting, than just physics-y, you know, figure out how to manipulate physics to push a block into the right place. So, I find this game a little bit more to my natural tendencies than, uh, I do a game like, uh, like Portal or Quantum Conundrum. Again, not to say that any one of them is better than, uh, better than another. So, on this puzzle, uh, as you may have noticed here, we are trying to push blocks into the right space for those blocks to be in, but the grid is rotating, if that makes sense. Like, we're, imagine this thing, this kind of girder structure that we have here is like a Rubik's Cube. We, can, we can't access this blue cube from that platform that we were just on because it's over behind here. We can't see it, right? So we have to move this into a manipulatable, manipul, manipulable? We have to move this into a position where we can actually see it, if that makes sense. And I think... Actually, what we want to do with this is maybe put it, like, right there. And then maybe we can come back this way and then uh, augment it a little bit. This puzzle, actually, I, I never really uh, got this puzzle, if that makes sense. I... Maybe that did it? Yeah. I never really totally understood why this actually caused it to work. I guess because now these are like con these blocks are conduits for the power to transmit itself through. All I knew about that puzzle is that I, I did it. And I, I felt good about it. And there is another line puzzle upcoming as well. That, those are a big focus of this game. And again, that's why I said that it kind of reminds me, for my taste, it, it seems to remind me the most of... Uh, does this eventually go up? Yeah, it does. Um, if we interact with it. 
That's why this kind of reminds me the most of um, The Witness, because The Witness, uh, you know, the upcoming game from Jonathan Blow Studio. I think it's still called Number None, but anyway, uh, you know, you walk through this crazy looking environment. The environment is supposed to give you environmental clues about how to solve these puzzles. Then you look at the puzzles and it's like, let's put it this way, it's not what you would necessarily expect uh, by by looking at the game. Uh, it, it's like, um, you know, connect the dots puzzles, but we've been promised that the connect the dots puzzles are deeper, if you will, or a little, you know, more intellectually stimulating than just a, a coloring book or something like that. And I believe that. I do believe that. I just, um, oh, I don't think I can do this puzzle yet, actually. I gotta walk around to the entire other side. Um, I just, I think they make very good comparisons for one another. So this is powered up already, so I should be able to interact with this one. So on this one, what we've got to do is get this to power on to, so it looks kind of like an exclamation mark. And this one is uh, very similar to the other one, except we only get four bars of power. And with four bars of power, we can't quite get that power to the end. So as you might be expecting, one thing that we might want to do here is just kind of uh, uh, append some power till the end, or to the end, I guess I should say. So once it passes by there, oh, we got to do it twice, I guess. I almost did it there, I thought. Um, I'm trying to put it on like every other space, because I think that actually makes it better. This one took me a little while to solve as well, so... Go like this, and you can see one round of this. Very nearly makes it to the end. Mm, no, we don't want to do it that way. Or that way, I think. I'm gonna Just give it a second here. Wait for it. It's always difficult to play these like atmospheric puzzle games. There we go, so we got that powered up. Uh, it's always difficult to play these kind of atmospheric puzzle games online, or not online, but on video, because it uh, really showcases uh, how stupid I can be sometimes. So that has powered up this module now, which should allow us to interact with this line puzzle, which is effectively very, very similar to the other one. Um, we, the, You can see how much power we have here. Uh, it's eight blocks, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. And what we have to do for this one is get both sides powered up and then get to the center. So it's a little bit more of an advanced... Uh, one here, but I think it follows pretty much the same formula, so we'll want to do like a, that basically, but this isn't going to do it, we're going to need to basically quick time event it, and still place them, oh, we almost did it there, okay, give it a second, place these back, I thought I did it there, maybe we can uh, stagger them a little bit further, like what if we did like a, huh, huh, uh, is this going to work? I, don't, I mean, I don't think it's going to work all the way, but I think it might give us a little bit more time. Hey, that actually worked completely fine. So, I thought that was more difficult than it actually was, but we actually managed to get them completely powered up there just by using a little bit more of a rudimentary uh, style of puzzle solving. In any case, that is going to uh, light up the pink beam there, as you can see. Uh, also, not to be crass, but totally the name of my genitalia. And by genitalia, I mean lightsaber. Lightsaber is Latin for genitalia. Um... Vice versa, I suppose. Uh, we're gonna try to get back to that central hub area, but basically, uh, the green light is on and the pink light are on. If we get the teal light to turn on by solving the teal room, then we can move to another stage of, of puzzles in the game. But this is basically all I've played at Frax so far. Uh, is this the room that we were in? It was. And obviously it goes a little bit faster when you're solving the puzzles. Uh, I'm gonna return to the last station. Obviously it goes a little bit faster when you're, um, Solving the puzzles for the second time, but I do like what I've played so far, and if you're the kind of person who is really into first-person puzzling, I think this could totally be something that's up your alley. I think it's uh, one of the more intriguing abstract games I've played in, you know, my entire time doing this on YouTube. Oftentimes when I play abstract games, I, uh, <laughs> I should probably put an epilepsy warning there. Um, uh... Oftentimes when I play abstract games, uh, I, I feel that they sacrifice some of the gameplay mechanics, or some of the strengths of their mechanics are sacrificed for the abstract nature, or as a result of the abstract nature. Games like Mirror Moon EP, uh, if I'm thinking about it. Very abstract game, very intriguing game that I ended up not covering, just because in two hours of play, never figured out what the fuck I was doing. Games like Proteus, I know a lot of people really, really like Proteus. I think Proteus is beautiful, fantastic visuals, fantastic music. And I'm not trying to take this opportunity, and especially if the developers are watching and they're like, Oh, we really like Proteus, and I don't use our game as an opportunity to take shots at other games. It's a worthy comparison, is basically what I'm getting at. Um, and a favorable comparison for Fract as well. Proteus, I think, looks great, sounds great. A lot of people are totally into it. The What, what they're going for with the game resonates with them. Uh... Doesn't really tickle my fancy. So for Frack to have overcome that and made me intrigued uh, in uh, with it 
in spite of its kind of abstract nature, not because of its kind of abstract nature, uh, I think it's a very positive thing, and it's it's very telling that this is a, a game that I think a lot of people are going to like. It's a, maybe a little bit more of an accessible abstract game compared to something like maybe Continue 987654321. Uh, and I think this is a game that's fairly easy to recommend at $13.50 to $15 if you're the kind of person who's into stuff like Antichamber Portal, Quantum Conundrum, Mag Runner, etc., etc., uh, but as always, thanks for watching. I hope that has done a, a pretty good job of showcasing the game and telling you the caveats and qualms that I have with it, as well as the strengths and weaknesses I feel about it. It's good. It's good so far. And uh, the only thing that could make me maybe temper my expectations a little bit is if somebody leaves in the comments like, oh, it's actually an hour and a half long. You just didn't notice because you didn't finish that teal puzzle. Mathis told me he finished it and the game didn't end. And I'm taking him at his word there. But if you enjoyed the video... Click the like button, it helps out a great deal, and of course subscribe if you want to see more in the future. As always, thanks for watching, there will be a link in the video description to pick up Fract on Steam if you're interested. Again, $13.50 for its opening week sale, $15 after that. As always, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.